2014, I guess, I concocted this, concocted this one-year project uh, for the Guggenheim Fellowship uh, about uh, these kind of exemplary landscapes of Los Angeles. And uh, I had some idea that, you know, there were certain places. I remember naming, for example, the St. Francis Dam site uh, or, you know, things of that nature that spoke about this kind of conflict between the natural and, uh, and the human worlds here in this part of the in this part of the country, and but when and and of course the application was successful. But uh, now I had to kind of come up with something. So uh, as I started doing field work, it became clear to me that this was not a one-year project. This was going to be something a lot more extensive. And to be honest, I don't remember exactly how I came up with this idea of four ecologies. I mean, it was just like thinking about this as a kind of as a kind of problem to solve, um, but when I when I came up with this idea, of these these four general types of landscapes, if you will, that I thought more or less defi at least my define my understanding of uh, not just not it's neither the natural world nor the the human made world, but rather the kind of intersection of both and the whether harmonious or more often, uh, the conflict between those two things. And, you know, I was really influenced by, say, Mike Davis's books. I know in one uh, Ecology of Fear, he, he, he points out that Los Angeles probably has the largest urban wild interface of any North American city. And that sort of really, you know, it sort of charged me to think about these things. So, so to kind of sum up, I... I defined four types of landscapes that I thought uh, pretty much covered my understanding of what this area was about, and that is um, in, in order of uh, uh, the rivers, uh, the river systems of uh, the Los Angeles, and um, actually as a footnote to that, what I just said there, um, I'm in the process of editing that part of the world, and I've had to decide, uh, because I have so much material, I've cut out the San Gabriel River from the project and threw it into a, a back burner for maybe another project. And I'm sticking to the Los Angeles River watershed, uh, which doesn't it almost includes the San Gabriel, but it doesn't quite. So we have the Los Angeles River and its major tributaries, the Rio Hondo, the Arroyo Seco. Um, and, uh, and of course, the first major tributary in, in sequence from upstream to down uh, is the Big Tahunga Wash, which is fed by mountain streams, including Big Tahunga Creek, Little Tahunga Creek, and many, many others. Uh, so part one is the rivers. Uh, part two is the coast. And uh, by coast, I don't, I'm not, uh, it's, they're not pictures of the beach per se, but the uh, where the land mass meets the, uh, meets the Pacific. Uh, so that includes like remnant wetlands, uh, the cliffs of the Palisades or Palos Verdes Peninsula and things like that. Uh, part three working title is Hills and Canyons, which hopefully is self-explanatory. And part four, the subtitle is Haunted by the Desert, which is a, something I stole from Joan Didion. Um, it's where the more or less Mediterranean climate of the, of the Los Angeles basin meets the harsher climate of the uh, both the lower Colorado and the Mojave deserts. So... Um, so the process is that um, I've actually made pictures for all four of these parts uh, as I as I work, and, and now I've you know my one year project is now in its sixth year, um, and um, I have this really large map in my studio that I've made, and uh, the four parts of the project are color coded, and whenever I photograph something towards this project, I I write it on that map in, in the appropriate colored pencil. Um, because I, I guess it's, I'm just not very, um, what's the word, uh, disciplined. Dis <laughs> <laughs> this, I don't know if it's disciplined or, uh, organized or something, but I, I tend to work on lots of things at once. And that sort of allows for more, for, at least to, for me, for more sort of surprises and new things to develop, uh, the exhibition here at Lapis Press uh, has a small selection of color photographs that I made in the Big, Big Tahunga Wash. And I've made many more black and white photographs there over the last several years. Um, uh, without going into why those pictures are in color at the moment, uh, I think they're 
significant enough that they're actually a kind of subspecies of the project as a whole. They don't, I mean, they fit into part one because the Tahunga is a tributary of the river. Uh, but they're also seem to be pointing to something that might be, what would you call it, a, a kind of footnote project or something. I'm not quite sure how it, how it all fits together yet. Um, and another uh, selection in the show are, are the uh, photographs of burned landscapes, which is, of course, a very typical Los Angeles kind of landscape. Um, and for a while, I was thinking that there would be these burned landscapes in all four parts because fires are kind of more or less everywhere. Uh, but that's sort of maybe developing into part five, if you will, uh, which would be color coded on my map in black. <laughs> so, so that's the kind of general layout of the project. I, uh, I have shown uh, fairly nice selections of part one, the rivers at both Gallery Luisati and Large Glass in London. And uh, this show here, partly because of the rather peculiar nature of how the walls uh, relate to each other in the space, uh, each of the three walls that we're using for the show uh, has a different group uh, of pictures. Uh, the largest group uh, being pictures from part two, uh, the, the coast. And I really wish I could come up with a better word than coast because I know what it con conveys, what, what pops up in people's mind is not exactly what I'm doing. A lot of my work comes out of the process of thinking I'm doing something else. <laughs> you know, you know, you go out to do one thing and then you say, oh, what's that? And, you know, and they start thinking about that, you know. I, I mean, I never sat in Long Beach and said, ah, I'll go photograph dog houses in the desert. I mean, that's just not how I work. I was out there and doing other things, and I thought, isn't that odd, that little doghouse there, <laughs> you know? So, and, that, and the reason that I would call, atten that would call it my attention is because it has some relationship to something else I was interested in or already done, like in this case, the abandoned houses, you know? So doghouses had a, but I didn't go out thinking about or looking, at the, looking for doghouses. And if I wasn't doing the abandoned houses, I would have, probably wouldn't have recognized the doghouse as a subject, you know. So one thing sort of preps you to kind of be attuned to something else. And uh, and then, you know, and a lot of this stuff sort of circles around some overriding concerns, like the notion of uh, contemporary ruins and stuff like that, and this kind of, uh, this kind of uh, dialectic of culture nature and how that plays itself out in various ways. The, there's a kind of sort of loosely defined plan that over a certain number of years th there would be uh, a four volume set of books uh, that would correspond to the you know the, the four parts of the project I have at this point I have no idea where those sub projects fit into that maybe there's a fifth book of all the other material uh, you know the the pandemic you know put a kind of damper on lots of things like you know I, I, I sort of put even thinking about the publications aside for a minute to concentrate on just making new images and printing and stuff like that. Uh, and they'll always, you know, the thing is, I, I mean, I, I, could, I could finish it. I think the way a lot of projects like this get finished is when the artist gets bored with it <laughs> or it's published or a significant exhibition of it or something like that. But, you know, theoretically, it's a, for me, it's a rich enough subject that I could just continue it for the rest of my working life because it's a you know my the subject itself is about the landscape changing so it'll always be different you know it's like uh, when uh, you know I sort of I said to myself I can't go back to this part of the Los Angeles River anymore because I'll just keep making the same pictures and then we have this big r torrential rain and I think I got to go back there and see what happened because <laughs> it'll be completely different you know. And, you know, Ache, I mean, I don't want to sound pretentious, but Ache never stopped photographing Paris, you know. <laughs>